Hi everyone, if you're new here to the channel, my name is Ovi, I'm a fourth year medical student and welcome to Ovi Man. So first of all, I'm really sorry that you didn't get into med school, but don't give up. I applied five times before being accepted into medical school. Now, there is a huge variety of reasons why you might not have gotten in in medical school on your first try. And it's quite unusual or uncommon that people get in on their very first try. Now, things that can affect your application will depend on where you're applying and where you're from. So for example, in Canada, most schools will look at a variety of factors that's all listed on their website. So they could be looking at your GPA, at your MCAT score, at your research experience, at your personal statement, at your reference letters, and then your extracurricular activities and your CV for like work experience and other things like that. Anyways, so let's get into the specific reasons why you might have not gotten in in med school. So first things first, like I just said, GPA. So your GPA is basically calculated based off of your average and your grades, and then they use the class grade and then your school's average, and then the, they might have different uh, extra indicators like that indicate the force of your year, the force of your group, the difficulty of the course or the class that you're taking of like the undergrad and all that. So GPAs are calculated a bit differently in every single university because they take into account different things. But at the end of the day, like it's just a number and then that's one of the main cutoffs that schools use to evaluate applicants. Then the second one is the MCAT. The MCAT, I think you all know what it is. I have my books right here that I wrote the MCAT with. Um, shout out to Kaplan, you know, I bought these books, they're pretty good. Um, yeah, so your MCAT score is your MCAT score. You all know what it is. If you wanna get a better score, you just write the exam again, which is way easier to than just writing your GPA again, because there's no such thing. You can't, like you can't redo something. You, I mean, you can do a second undergrad, but like, yeah, like don't uh, retake your MCAT if needs be. So that's a very common first cutoff for most schools. Now, the third reason would be a poorly written personal statement. So if your school requires a personal statement, well, you really need to sell yourself to the school. You really need to show them why you're a good fit for the school and why you want to go to that school specifically as opposed to all the other schools. I guess this is one of the most important things when you're applying to med school and same thing for residency. You really wanna show why that school is special. You really wanna show them that they're special and that you wanna be with them for A, B, C reasons. And you really gotta sell yourself. And if your personal statement is poorly written or you don't sell yourself correctly or you write the wrong things, that can really, really negatively impact your application because that shows that either you're not interested in the school or that you're not like, you know, you don't have anything special about you or something like that, which I think is false. I think everyone has, you know, something special going for them. You just need to know how to write about it and how to extract it. I guess tips for writing a personal statement, I might make a video on that later on, um, but just get it to other people, like have them read it and tell them what they think and well, have them tell you what they think. Um, send it to current medical students, to residents or anyone you know, basically, and ask them, what do they think about it? Did you sell yourself correctly? And don't be, don't be cocky. Like you need to be very humble and you sort of like need to show that you're a decent human being. And yeah, don't write like, yeah, I've always had to do medicine. I want to help people, nah, nah. Like everyone writes that. You need a story. You need something to hug them and have them read your whole personal statement. That's really, really important. Now, the next point is also concerning letters, but that's recommendation letters. So having reference letters, however you want to call them, from appropriate people. So if you've done like some extracurricular activities or volunteering or research, which you probably have done if you're applying to medical school, you might want to get some reference letters from these people. So if you've done some research with a doctor or something, um, you need to ask them like, would you be comfortable with writing me a strong reference letter? Like you really need to ask a strong reference letter. 
if you see that they're hesitating or that they're like iffy about it well just don't like don't go with it like don't don't ask them for a letter because it's better to have a very strong reference letter that's vouching for you from someone who's um how do i say this politely like less prestigious than having a pretty standard letter like oh yeah good med student nana nah, from a very very well known researcher and things like that like i think it's more important to have someone that knows you really well of course the name carries a weight but it, it's more the content that matters that's the most important thing so look at the things like the values of the school look at their mission statement and send your cv to that person running your personal statement so that they sort of like get to know you better and then tell them about you know interesting things you've seen like if there's any cases you've seen or things about your experience that you know makes you a good applicant so that they know you better and that they can write you a better letter to get into medical school. Now, the next point would be a lack of extracurricular activities. So usually med schools like to see well-rounded, diversified individuals. So if you're someone who just studies all day and you had the best MCAT score and whatnot, well, you might pass for that cutoff, but for the cutoff, depending on the weight of how much it's worth for the extracurricular activities, well, if you haven't done much, well then, you know, that can hurt you in your application. Of course, I'm not talking about like, you must be a varsity athlete to like show that you're diversified and you must do like 15 hours every single week of like volunteering and all that, but just show that you have diversified experience, just do a little bit of everything. But if you prefer one thing, you can do more of that and whatnot, but you still need to show that you're a well-rounded individual. That's the most important thing. Now, a next one that could be debatable is a lack of clinical experience. Now you might be wondering, well, how do I get clinical experience if I'm not even in med school yet? Well, I can do volunteering. You can volunteer at a hospital. You can go like, you know, there's all these different programs that exist. You can go and like keep company to the patients. You can go and bring them like, you know, books and stuff. You can bring them coffee, like, there's all these different programs that exist in hospitals. Um, you can even be at the entrance and like bring people to their appointments if, cause you know, if they're scared and they're stressed and you know, hospitals is, are huge and they don't know where to go. So you can guide them and bring them, you know, with them and whatnot. There's so many different programs that exist. And by showing that you have meaningful clinical experience, that means that you have been in a hospital environment you know what you're signing up for by going in medical school. You know what to expect. You've seen the environment. You've been in the environment. You've, you've felt what it's like to be in a clinical setting. So I think um, this is something that's quite important because medical schools do want to see that you know what you're signing up for. So that's important to show them. And then last but not least, you might be applying to too few schools. That depends on your philosophy of where you want to go, if you want to move, if you don't want to move, how far you want to move. Is it, does it matter if it's a different time zone? Does it matter if it's different, a different country? Um, like I am, I'm studying in Ireland, but I'm from Canada and that's, you know, pretty far, you know, time difference and all that. Lots of sacrifices, but um, you have to apply broadly the like the further you apply the more schools you apply statistically speaking the more chances you have of getting in and then for us students for example you can look at do schools and md schools do you want to apply to do schools as well or only md schools and if so why like figure it out are there any significant differences in practice i don't think there is between do and md you know they can do the same jobs and whatnot they can apply the same specialties now with the new match um so yeah, do apply broadly. Don't restrict yourself to only your city or your state or you know your province. In Canada, you know it's mostly like one school per province, except Ontario has like five and Quebec has four. Um, but yeah, in general, like do apply broadly to increase your chances of getting into medical school. So overall, getting accepted into medical school requires a combination of multitude of factors. So a strong academic background, strong letters of recommendation with a strong personal statement, a well-rounded diversified individual with extracurriculars and that knows what they're signing up to. 
You can also have research and all these other factors that I've discussed in this video. But if you didn't get in, if you didn't get, you know, the perfect MCAT score and whatnot, well, don't give up. I'm telling you, don't give up. Keep on going. And I can tell you one day you're going to get in. Who cares how long it takes? It can take you one year, two years, three years. Hell, I have some people in my class who are in their thirties, forties, who are doing it at a second career. So who cares? Just don't give up. Keep on doing the good work. And you know, you didn't get in this year. Who cares? Apply again next year. Who cares what other people do? You got this. So if you didn't see my previous videos, I'm going to link them right here. Go ahead and check them out. If you have any questions for me, you can send me a DM on Instagram at ov.med or you can comment them down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next video. Thank you.